the first thing that we need to look at in the uh, year 13 kinetics is the idea of orders of reaction and fundamentally the order um, of a reaction um, when we're talking about reactants is the magnitude of effect on the rate uh, that occurs when you change the concentration of that reactant so you know if we double the concentration does it double the rate or does it quadruple the rate or does it have no effect on the rate so when we're talking about orders uh, we're talking about the the magnitude of effect changing the concentration of that reactant has on the rate of that reaction so there are three orders that you need to know the first one is zero order which is when changing the concentration of that particular reactant has no effect on the rate whatsoever so the rate of the reaction is completely unaffected by increasing or decreasing the concentration of this reactant and we refer to that as a zero order reactant and it can be written as this expression the change in rate is proportional to or equal to the change in concentration to the power zero and anything to the power zero is one so that just tells you that it has no effect on the rate the second one we need to look at is first order so first order reactants when you change their concentration it has a directly proportional effect on the concentration on the rate sorry so if I were to double the concentration, it would double the rate. If I were to triple the concentration, it would triple the rate. If I were to quadruple the concentration, it would quadruple the rate. If I were to halve the concentration, it would halve the rate. So first order reactants demonstrate a directly proportional effect on the rate. So the change in rate is proportional to the change in concentration to the power 1, producing this directly proportional effect. And finally, second order reactants. And when you change the concentration of a second order reactant, it has an exponential effect on the rate. So, for example, if I were to double the concentration of a second order reactant, the rate would increase by 2 squared. So it would increase by a factor of 4. If I were to triple the concentration of a second order reactant the rate would increase by 3 squared so it would increase by a factor of 9 so second order reactants the change in rate is equal to the change in concentration squared so you get this exponential effect so that's for talking about individual reactants now some reactants are zero order some are first order some are second order if you want to know the overall order of a reaction, you just have to add up the sum of all of the individual reactant orders. So in an example, if we had a reaction that had two reactants and they were both second order, then the overall order of the reaction would be four. If we had a reaction that had three reactants, a first order, a second order, and a, a, a zero order, then the overall order of the reaction would be three. You just add them up. You add up the orders of the individual reactants. And just to recap, a zero order reaction, uh, reactant has no effect. Changing the concentration of a zero order reactant has no effect on the rate. A first order reactant, whatever you do to that concentration of a first order reactant, it will do the same thing to the rate. So if you double it, it will double the rate. If you halve it, it will halve the rate. And second order, uh, the rate will change by whatever you changed in the concentration squared. So if you double the concentration, the rate will increase by a factor of four. If you quadrupled the concentration, the rate would increase by a factor of 16. And then overall orders, just add them up and add up the sum total of the reactant orders and that gives you the overall order of the reaction. So that's what we mean when we say zero order, first order, second order. And what we're going to talk about is how do we determine uh, whether a reactant is zero, first or second order. And the first thing we can do is we can use concentration time graphs to determine the order of the reaction for some reactants. So what I have here are three different graphs all showing change in concentration over time. Um, and again, you can tell by the fact that these are all decreasing, that these are all reactants and they're all decreasing different amounts at different rates. So 
we'll start off with this top one here. So this is um, this method is sort of the graphical determination of re of order. So so what's important here? Now these are concentration time graphs. Um, it's important to know that the gradient of this line represents the rate. Okay, the gradient of the line is the rate. So what we can see here is we have a, a linear correlation between concentration and time. And because it's linear, the gradient doesn't change. It's the same. And if the gradient doesn't change, then that means the rate doesn't change. So as the concentration of our reactant is decreasing, the rate is remaining constant. It must be a zero order reactant. Okay, so it produces a linear relationship between concentration and time. The gradient is constant, therefore the rate is constant. So if the gradient isn't changing then the rate isn't changing. So what we can do um, it's not really necessary here. I mean, we can see quite clearly that the gradient's not changing, the rate's not changing, so this is a zero order reactant. But what you could do is you could plot a different graph. If we plotted this as concentration on the x axis and rate on the y axis, well, what we'll see is as the concentration changes, the rate stays the same, so you end up with a completely horizontal linear relationship. So it can be plotted as a rate concentration graph and you will see this very clear as concentration changes rate does not change confirming its zero order. Now this one here, now straight away we can see that the gradient changes. So it's not zero order because the gradient changes which means the rate changes. So as the concentration of our reactant is varying as is the rate, so it can't be zero order. But we need to determine whether it's um, uh, first order or second order. So the first thing we can look at is the concentration. Now, if you look at the time it takes that concentration to halve, so from here to here it's halved, and let's just call that time x, and then you look at how long it took for it to halve again, and you notice that it's the exact same amount of time, and then the amount of time for it to halve again. Okay, so if the time taken for the concentration to halve is constant, so it has a constant half-life, then that tells you it's a first order reaction. So, so first order produces an exponential relationship between concentration and time with a constant half-life. Okay, so basically time taken for concentration to half is constant. So, 
you know, if if I were to add numbers to this, if I say that maybe it took 10 seconds to halve, and then it took 10 seconds to halve again, then it took 10 seconds to halve again, then we could say, well, that's that's a first order reactant. Now, the other thing we can do is we can plot a rate concentration graph. Now, going back to this quickly, in order to calculate the rate, you obviously need to uh, work out the gradient of the line. You're just going to use rise over run for that. Okay, so I'll just draw that on quickly. So again, create your triangle and your gradient change in y over change in x, which is equal to rate. Now, we're not going to be able to do that here because the gradient's changing. So if we want to know uh, how the rate is changing, we need to take tangents. Now, in order to plot your rate concentration graph here, we only needed one calculation because we only had one gradient. Um, you need three for anything that's got a curve. So what you're going to do is take three tangents and it always helps to start at the, the very beginning, get an initial uh, tangent, get one about halfway, and then one nearer the end. Okay, and if you calculate the gradient of each one of these tangents, you will get three rates. And you, reading from the y-axis, can work out the concentration that correlates with those rates. And then you can plot uh, a rate concentration graph. So again, gradient equals change in y over change in x, which is equal to rate. So you've got to do three calculations, one for each of your tangents. Um, so you can work out the rate at three different points and then reading off of the y-axis you can see what the concentration was at those points. So you now have three plots, you have three concentrations with three rates and then you can plot a rate concentration graph. So you're going to plot your three points and what you'll find if it is a first order reaction is you'll get a nice linear correlation like that and again that should be what we're expecting so produces a directly proportional linear rate concentration graph. And finally, moving on to this one here. Now I'm sure you can guess that this one's going to be second order. Um, you'll notice there's no, um, the half-life is not constant in this one here. So you could check the half-lives first but they're not constant. It doesn't take the same amount of time for the concentration to half each time. So, you know, that's a, an indicator that it's not first order. But the only way to uh, prove that it's second order is to plot a rate concentration graph. So again, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take our tangents. So again, one right at the beginning, get your initial rate of reaction. One nearer the bottom sort of here and then one nearer the end perhaps sort of there so again you need a minimum of three tangents uh, calculate the gradient of each one of those tangents which will give you the rate and then reading off of the y-axis you can find the concentration at those uh, at those points so you have three plots three concentrations with three rates and then you can plot a rate concentration graph. So this is our second order okay so again it produces an exponential relationship between concentration 
at a time. There is no constant half-life. So we need to be able to plot it as a rate concentration graph. And if we plot it as a rate concentration graph, you will find that it produces an exponential relationship. So it produces an exponential relationship between rate and concentration. Now, the final thing you could do to confirm its second order is to uh, plot this again, but instead of plotting rate against concentration, plot rate against concentration squared. And if your reactant truly is um, a second order reactant, then you will get a nice directly proportional linear relationship. rather than the exponential one. So it produces an exponential relationship. No, not, sorry, a linear, a linear relationship between rate and concentration squared, okay? So it will produce a nice linear relationship and that will confirm that it is second order. So, you know, a huge part of this topic is all about plotting graphs, taking tangents, working out the gradients of those tangents, knowing that the gradient is equal to the rate. And remember, um, these are the shapes you're looking for, okay? So on a rate concentration graph, uh, if the rate does not change when concentration changes, it is zero order. If the rate increases in a directly proportional linear uh, relationship with changing concentration, then it is first order. And if that rate increases exponentially with an increase in concentration, then it is second order. And you can clarify that it's second order by plotting rate against concentration squared, which again would, pro would be proven by producing a directly proportional linear relationship.